Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in this video we're going to return back to the famous comet known as Oumuamua that visited our solar system a few years ago, well actually it's still kind of here, it's just leaving us now, and may have come from another star system that it left millions of years ago. In this video we're going to discuss another really interesting idea in regards to its shape and its origin that might finally be able to explain why this comet was so strange and why we had so many difficulties trying to explain its unusual formation and, of course, its prolonged shape. Let's talk about this and welcome to Wadame. So back in October of 2017, the scientists discovered the first ever interstellar comet known as Oumuamua. There were a lot of unusual things about it though. First of all, it seemed to have been changing directions as it passed close to the sun, although most comets usually do that, but this one did not really emit any visible cometary tail that could be a telltale sign of how this comet was able to slowly change its uh, trajectory. Most of the speculations revolved around its unusual prolonged shape, which may have been essentially about 10 times as long as it was wide, and at the same time, some scientists even tried to explain away all of the observations by changing the shape to more of a pancake, or even suggesting it was some sort of an interstellar probe sent by aliens. And this is one of the reasons it became so popular, mostly because of this uh, unusual speculation. But over the past few years, um, we kind of settled on the idea of this being just a typical rock, mostly because SETI also investigated this unusual comet and even tried to listen to radio transmissions from here, and didn't really find anything. And today we believe that it still has a somewhat unusual formation, very different from any of the other comets in the uh, solar system. And the recent paper analyzes this in a little bit more detail and tries to investigate if it's possible that this comet actually originated by essentially being broken up through tidal effects when it passed really close to its parent star. Essentially what it's trying to uh, explain here is how this comet acquired its shape. And today we know that if an object, like for example a rock of any kind or an asteroid or a comet, passes really really close to a very large massive body, it's actually going to um, create this. It's going to create a relatively prolonged shape. This is what we refer to as the tidal effects and this is one of the reasons why, for example, the beautiful gas giant Saturn has these incredibly massive and very very beautiful large rings. Obviously other gas giants and ice giants have them too, and they're actually formed by very similar effects through tidal interaction and essentially tidal stripping. And to try to demonstrate how all of this may have worked, let's just take this Pluto right here, which sort of represents a really large comet, and we're going to send it on the way toward the Sun on a somewhat eccentric orbit that would then probably kick it out of the solar system. So essentially here, the closer Pluto approaches to the Sun, the more tidal effects it will start experiencing. And here we can even try to graph these tidal stress effects, as they're known, by looking at this graph right here. As you can see, it's basically an exponential graph. And the closer to the Sun Pluto gets, the more tidal effects it starts experiencing, until at some point, the gravity of Pluto can no longer sustain the shape itself, and it starts to slowly fall apart. And you're going to witness this any second now. It's going to be a really quick passage, but it will actually be enough to most likely dramatically change the shape of the object, because here, as you can see, the effects become extremely exponential. And right around here somewhere, we should see a slight change in the shape. Okay, it wasn't really enough, but it was enough, as you can see, to slightly deform the object and uh, really some of the fragments. Now, because Pluto obviously has a lot more gravity than a typical smaller comet, it's able to maintain its shape a little bit better. If this was a much smaller object, if this was an asteroid or a comet that's roughly around a few kilometers across, it would most likely completely disintegrate, creating something similar to what you see right here in this schematic. And this of course implies that this is probably how Oumuamua was created, and more specifically why it has this unusual shape and also other parameters that we couldn't really explain from the beginning. Oh and by the way, if you look at the graph right here, um, as I continue running the simulation, this was the peak of tidal effects and then it dropped off quite quickly. And as Pluto disappears and basically moves away from the Sun, it's now going to experience less tidal effects and essentially maintain its shape 
while actually still kind of having a bit of a tail on both sides. This is basically what we're seeing here as well. Now, okay, so what about the other facts? Why wasn't this comet still emitting any kind of tail or any other signs that are typical of other comets, suggesting this is how it's accelerating or decelerating? Well, one of the explanations here is that as the comet itself was passing close to the sun and is essentially kind of melted a little bit and had a bit of an outgassing and also then reached the point where the space was suddenly cool enough, these fragments that escaped the comet and formed the long shape started to solidify and develop a kind of a surface crust, essentially forming a permanent icicle with some parts underneath it. Basically, even though the surface of the comet was now void of any kind of uh, particles that could produce outgassing, inside the comet itself, underneath the initial crust, there was still quite a lot of various particles that could outgas as the comet came closer and closer to our sun. So in other words, a lot of the ices are underneath the comet and were not actually visible right away, but most likely were still there, just not really as easily seen as in a typical comet that usually emits a lot of this outgassing. And also, obviously, because we were able to find this comet, the scientists behind this paper also suggest, and actually other scientists as well, um, that these comets are extremely common. The implication here is that roughly uh, around 100 trillion similar objects are emitted by every star system throughout its lifetime, with some of them possibly having similar origins and this prolonged shape. And this of course suggests that there are more of these comets per star system than there are actual stars in our entire galaxy. And that just means that there are a lot of these comets flying around pretty much everywhere in the interstellar space. Now this also of course implies that we're going to be seeing more and more of these comets now that we're no kind of what to look for. It would come as no surprise if we find another one this year and possibly a few more next year as well. But whether these comets are going to be similarly uh, shaped as Oumuamua, or whether they're going to be a lot similar to the famous comet Borisov, which was very likely a round or somewhat round in shape, we don't really know just yet. We're going to have to wait and see what else we discover. But this particular explanation does provide us with enough uh, details to kind of explain away a lot of things. Like, for example, it obviously explains the shape of the comet, it also explains why the color was most likely reddish. In other words, it was actually um, kind of a dry comet that passed by really close to the star. And of course, this uh, does give us an explanation for why the outgassing was not seen either. With the biggest explanation, of course, being that the outgassing only activated when the comet itself was really, really close to the sun and most likely got deactivated right after. Because essentially, the upper crust here was protecting all of the icy materials underneath. And the other important implication here is that comets like Oumuamua may actually present us with a really interesting chance to study what it's like in other star systems and to possibly even discover pieces of other planets, because the origin of Oumuamua might imply some sort of a leftover from a planet, possibly an asteroid that ended up creating planets, or even some sort of a super-Earth, or maybe even hot Jupiter that came really close to the star and threw away a large chunk of its material that then turned into a comet, an interstellar comet. So in that sense, studying Oumuamua, or possibly one day landing on Oumuamua and trying to get a few samples, might actually help us understand the origin of other star systems and of course, what exactly their material is made out of as well. Or possibly even lead us to discover some sort of an unusual star system somewhere out there that potentially has a habitable planet similar to planet Earth. And what's really great about this interstellar cometary research is that now we have at least one major observatory that's going to be operational really soon, the so-called Vera Rubin Observatory, named after the famous Vera Rubin, who you can see right here, who was basically the mother of dark matter. And this observatory is going to be able to capture a lot more of these comets and possibly even provide us with at least one new discovery per week. But this is something we'll, I guess, talk about in some of the future videos. For now, I think this is a pretty good explanation to Oumuamua that might actually finally put the end to the constant debates on what exactly this is, where it came from, and whether it's aliens or not. But I think we're all kind of also waiting for this third discovery, because the third interstellar comet is going to once and for all tell us more about what to expect in the future. Are the comets coming toward the solar system going to be similar to Oumuamua, or similar to the comet known as Borisov? 
because one of them, Oluomua, is very unusual. The other one, Borisov, seems to be very similar to what we have here in the solar system. So for now, all we can do is just wait and see. Until we discover more, that's really it. Thank you for watching. Check out the paper in the description below. Subscribe if you still haven't. Share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. And come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, maybe support this channel Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. Alternatively, you can also support this channel by buying the beautiful, wonderful person t-shirt that I'm wearing right now as well. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for watching. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.